Moment Yee Quebec. 14 amazing athletes are ready to take on the challenge of 10 historic events in the tradition of the strongest man in history of Louis Sear in Fort Tessimus 2009. I'm Steve Bester, and alongside me calling the action is professional train coach Super Sam Dubé. Steve, once again, it is such an honor and a pleasure to be here today at Fortissimus 2009. We are going to witness history here. These are the 14 strongest men on the planet vying for the title of strongest men on earth. We've got 10 events at the Cathalon of Strength. These events are reminiscent of the old style strongman challenges. And last year, it came right down to the wire where the Fortissimus champion, Derek Poundstone, secured the victory by lifting the unliftable 530 pound Louis Sears stone in a Rocky Balboa-like ending, winning the Fortissimus Championship and becoming the strongest man on earth. We're ready for a great show, Sam. Let's see what the athletes have to say. Winning Fortissimus was probably one of the best days of my life thus far. I mean, it really truly showed me that, you know, the hard work really does pay off. You know, that especially a competition like this, you can come in, you know, as big and as strong as you want, but in, until you prepare your body to be able to, the, to withstand this punishment. Last year I was not very lucky and uh, lose one point competition. And this year I, I try to compete uh, better and show more, more my power. This is the heaviest event I've ever seen from a strongman uh, perspective. I think that the, the winner of this competition justifiably will be called this year's strongest man on earth. We can adjust saying that here in Fortissimus we're basing the strength events on the exploits of Louis Sear, the strongest man in recorded history. We should be honored to relate our strength challenges to him because of the magnitude of his feats of strength. On va aller chercher le titre de l'homme plus fort de la planète. Some advice I could give to the newcomers about Fortissimus, uh, knowing what I learned last year, <laughs> prepare for hell. Je suis Christian Savoie, je représente le Canada. Vous écoutez Fortissimus 2009. And we're ready for event number one, the Pyramid of Strength. Also known as the Power Stairs. Steve, the athletes will be proceeding two by two. 450 pounds, 500 pounds, 525 pounds has to be lifted five steps successively in a time of 75 seconds or less. These are anvils with handles attached. Well, quite a challenge for these guys, Sam. And we start with Derek Poundstone and Brian Shaw. Now, this is the luck of the draw here. The athletes were randomly chosen for the order. Derek Poundstone is the defending Fortissimus champion. He is built like a fire hydrant. This guy is, is dense, he's compact. The only other competitor who's as compact is Jimmy Marcus from England. Brian Shaw, on the other hand, is nearly six foot nine, and he weighed in this morning at 393 pounds. Two serious competitors, and they're pretty evenly matched. Here we go in here, Sam. Now watch the technique here. They have to lift each of these angles onto the stairs, and it mimics the second pull of a uh, of clean. Uh, somewhat. It's a, have to be very explosive. Poundstone is in the lead right now, but he seems to be having a little bit of trouble there with the third implement. Wow, it's getting tougher and tougher. These guys have to keep up the energy levels. Here. One more for Poundstone. Look at that. Look at these guys go. He's got it. He's got it. 125 pounds. And Johnny Shaw, not too far behind there. And Derek Poundstone. 2.58 seconds. That's the time to beat Steve. Brian Shaw not too far behind with 58.98 seconds. Good effort for both men. You saw me struggle with that last implement. I really got to fight through it. So it's my worst event probably in this competition. So you know, I'm, I'm all right with that. That last step was a little bit of an issue for me. I lost about 10 seconds there. But we'll see how it does. Brian, this is your first Fortissimus. How did it feel going against the reigning champ? Oh, it's good. I knew I knew Derek had a good time. You know, anytime you get to go against the, with the winner of the last year's contest is great. So we'll see. Are you satisfied with your performance then? No, that was a terrible run for me. So and we'll see how he does in his favorite event. We've got Mikhail Kukoyev, and he's be, he'll be facing Zadrunas Savikas. Steve, this is a huge showdown here. We've got Mikhail Kukoyev from Russia, five-time Russia strongest man, seven times Russian national team for the weightlifting, the super heavyweight class against the Junior Savikas, who is arguably the greatest strength athlete in the world. Wow, what a competition. 
Nation. These guys are off to a great start, Sam. They're just throwing that 500 pound opponent. That's a quarter of a ton, Steve. <laughs> I want to beat Big Z because Big Z never beat me before in power stage, you know. And uh, today it's his day in power stage. But Russian people say, first pie is broken. First pie. Understand? <laughs> you, you understand me? <laughs> Yeah. 
bench and deadlift. That should come in handy in this competition for sure. He too has a great deal of raw, uh, call that, uh, just manhandling strength, like the Gillingham brothers in the U.S. And uh, here is Dominic Philly in Canada, who's going to set this thing somewhere as well. These guys are giving it their all. Got to try to put in a good time and finish off here, because obviously necessary to do well in this event. Phil Fister has some of the largest hands you'll ever shake. The only hands bigger that I've shaken were uh, Mark Felix's, who you'll see a little bit later on in the contest. Quite a grip to him, sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And there it is, 56.54 seconds for Orkmeyer. Good time there for the Texas Stoneman of Cypress, Texas. And Fister completes his course, and we'll check the time. It's 63.19. Taking a little rest. Watch the technique here. They try and get their bodies right over the implements, thrust with the hips to shove the implements onto the stairs. Are you satisfied with your debut in Fortissimus 2009? Well, considering I have very little experience on power stairs, yeah. I mean, I just beat one of my idols, Phil Fester, so yeah. you can't walk away from that too unhappy, you know? Okay. So the big Z takes this event. He's followed by Kokliev, Poundstone, Orkweyer, Shaw, Savoy, Fister, and Murumets. If you're Philippe Jean, champion Canadian des athlètes de force, you're listening to Fortissimus 2009. You're watching Fortissimus 2009. Stay tuned for event number two, the Super Yo. Oh my god, he's a strong man, basically, because um, I used to play rugby back home to a fairly good level and um, sort of lost a bit of interest with that. I played a couple of years in New Zealand, came back to England and um, yeah, I just lost interest with the rugby, started training in the gym and there was a guy at my gym that, that was doing strong man, convinced me that maybe that was a good route for me to, to, to take and um, yeah, I ended up, well, it was about seven months later, I did my first World's Strongest Man. Event number two, the Giant Barrels Power Yoke. Also known as the Super Yoke. 925 pounds has to be carried yoke fashion for 30 meters as quickly as possible. Quite a task, but we've got Terry Hollins and Jimmy Marcou up first. Wow, Terry Hollins, England's strongest man, is Jimmy Marcou, Britain's strongest man. There's a real contrast in body types here, Steve. Let's see which body type wins out. Jimmy Marcou on the left is only about 5'11". 314 pounds, the smallest man in the contest. Then you've got Terry Hollins. 6'7", 390 pounds. Wow, look at these guys go. He's moving so wow. well. Look at that. Control the oscillation of the wow. Hollins finishes in 19.41 seconds. What a time to beat, Steve. Your nickname in Australian Gladiators is Thunder. Was this the thunder being brought? That's right. I'm bringing some thunder to Quebec. 
and uh, very honoured to be here. So thank you, Quebec. Ça te fait un peu manquer de stabilité un peu. Philippe Jean est saying that he's satisfied. He was going to and fro a little bit, but he's trying to put some rough in the middle of the field. And he's happy with that. He's satisfied with that. Il devrait être bon pour continuer jusqu'à finir la compétition. My name, I'm Chris. A bit stiff. I cannot move it as I want to. So that's why it was a bit slow. So I keep having to drop it every couple of minutes, couple seconds. This is off. We've got a couple of big battlers here. We've got Derek Poundstone and Travis Ortmeyer. Wow, battle of the USA. <laughs> that should be quite a quite a match. They're ready to go. And they're off running, Sam. These two have faced each other a number of times on US soil as well as at World Championships. Oh, Poundstone off to a quick start. Ortmeyer not far behind. It's like Poundstone is an ideal combination of them strength and awesome technique. He is very much a cerebral competitor. And there he is, 19.66 seconds, breaks the 20-second barrier, Sam. And Orkmeyer comes in at 24.56. He's no slow. Excellent run for both men. Good job by you guys. And speaking of big competitors, we've got Zadruda Savickas and Mikhail Popoyev. One can uh, become the leader in this event. It's uh, either of these two men, especially Big Z. It's fantastic at the yoke. Let's watch these guys go. The clock is on. And Zabik is on to an optimal big start. Yeah, and he's running, Sam. Mikhail's having a little bit of trouble here. Mikhail's been doing a lot more Olympic weightlifting lately. He's coming a little bit heavier. I know he hasn't put as much time into his strongman training. Wow. He's got to finish. He has to finish. Somehow with any time, as long as he beats the clock. Very methodical. If you finish last in this event, Sam, that, that could be it for you. You cannot score a last place in a bad event. And it can fool you. Let's take a look at the performances here. So Zadrudis just kept picking up speed, just kept accelerating. Look at that. He was going his fastest right at the end. That's 925 pounds, really half a ton. And we were just informed that that is a new world record. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I'm very happy. Uh, a few years ago, I, I have a record in this event. And now, again, I have a record in this event. Very, very good for me. Zavikas takes the 14 points. He's followed by Holland, Poundstone, Boyer, Kazelnik, Shaw, Miriam Mitz, and Ortmeier. And we mark Jimmy Marku, a year for Shinny, 47, Dimi, and all, and Zodi to go shit out.
My name is Derek Poundstone, Connecticut, USA. I'm the reigning Fortismus champion. If someone wants my title, they're going to come and take it. 2009 Fortismus starts, starts now. And let's go to event number three, the Sigmarsson Wheels Deadlift. The Sigmarsson Wheels Deadlift, named after the late, great Viking strongman, Jan Paul Sigmarsson of Iceland. 881 pounds, lifted for repetitions, conventional deadlift style, starting from a height of 17 and a half inches from the ground. And we start the competition with Mark Felix. Mark Felix is known for his deadlift strength. Now this isn't a full deadlift from the normal powerlifting position, but this is a partial deadlift with a two and a half inch bar. Now that's quite a bar he's lifting there. Now they're allowed to use wrist wraps. They're Iron Mind wrist wraps, generously donated by Dr. Randy Strausen, he's CEO of Iron Mind Enterprises. He's at eight now. Now you wow. see his technique here, he's using a lot of erectors, a lot of back, hardly any legs. He's very, very strong on the back. We don't want this event, Steve, to be a test of grip strength, and that's why we allow the wrist straps. Okay, so they're testing them on their, and this is, he's doing a good job, Sam. This looks like a lot of reps. 400 kilograms, 881 pounds. He's trying to summon the strength for the last couple. Now they're not allowed to use sumo style where the hands are inside the feet, inside the legs. Okay, so there's a lot of regulations here. It looks like a simple event, but a lot of rules. That's right, and there's a lot of technique too. And Mark Felix's technique is very, very efficient for his strengths, his body strength, and that's what you want to do. You want to maximize your strengths and minimize your weaknesses. And 13 reps, Sam. That's a fantastic number of reps. Uh, he looks pleased with that effort, and the fans are certainly appreciative. Watch the technique here. Very little knee bend, all back, very conducive to his build and his strengths. Look at the size of his hands. That bar looks like a normal bar. 13 repetitions. You are now the leader in this event. Yes, yeah, I always look forward to a deadlift. You know, it's um, a different height to what I'm used to. But yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Size-wise, as always, I will compete in lots of shows. I was probably one of the guys, small of guys, which is I compete in lots of shows. But at well, the end of the day, I'm here to compete the, uh, the strongest man and the strongest man there. So that doesn't affect me, never has affected me. I mean, the size, I can do it any time, but the strength is just there. And I'm, we will see Saturday night, Sunday night. And no doubt about that, as we watch Jimmy Marku. Jimmy Marku, he is currently Britain's strongest man. He and uh, Terry Hollins keep swapping the titles of England's strongest man and Britain's strongest man. He's the smallest man in the contest. 5'11", 314 pounds, very compact. He's going for six. He's small in stature, but he's got a lot of heart, Sam. You see the difference in his technique? He sits into it, and he pulls not only up, but a little bit back. So he's using his hips and his legs a little more than Mark Felix did. Mark um, Felix, also a former Britain's Strongest Man. So I guess it depends on where your particular strength is. That's the strategy you're going to use. Absolutely. Look at that. Well, he's having a pretty good show here. He's, he's doing those reps. The Sigmundson deadlift named after the late, great, multi-time world's strongest man, Jan Paul Sigmundson. Wow, look at the size of those wheels, Sam. 881 pounds. It's nearly half a ton. Now he's summoning up the strength to try to finish with a flurry here. You see he's using a thumbless grip so he doesn't get too much pronation on his, his arms there. It takes the pressure off the biceps because you can definitely tear a bicep in this, in this event. Uh, a lot of thought goes into their technique here. He's keeping his back tight. Very important to keep the back tight. There's the whistle. Nine reps. Pretty good, Sam. Pretty good when you consider it's about two and a half times body weight. <laughs> And here we got some other guys. Let's see how they Brian did. Shaw. Six reps for Shaw. Nearly six, nine of them. And Christian Savoy, he gave it his all, and he did two reps. And Christian is known for his strength in the wheelbarrow. And Kokliev gave it his best shot. Five Kokliev, reps. Powerful puller, super heavyweight Olympic lifting champion. And here's Phil Pfister. Very nice technique there by Phil Pfister. Yeah, Phil did manage three reps. And there's Louis Philip Jean. And he managed three reps as now well. Now they are allowed to hitch like that. It is acceptable in this competition. 
And Kozelnik's gave it his best shot. Again, three reps. Many of these men have powerlifting experience, competed at a world-class level. Look at the wider stance there by Terry Hollis. Terry Hall is pretty good six reps for him. Almost a sumo stance there. Travis Ortmeyer up. It's basically showing us that the level that Mark Felix achieved with 13 reps is incredible. Yeah, it's true. Seven reps for Ortmeyer, pretty good. And there's Derek Boyer. Again, fairly wide stance, emphasizing the hips. Let's see what he can do. He's ready to go. This guy reminds me of King Tonga, the wrestler, I tell you. Yeah, that's sad. Uh, Derek certainly can probably do very well in the ring, in the wrestling ring. Oh, absolutely. There, he's going for three. He's off to a pretty good start. Now, let's see if he can keep it up. He has a bit of a strategy here. I think he wants to stay viable in this event, but he's gonna be conservative. I remember talking to him just before. So he doesn't wanna waste everything in this event. He wants to sort of stream it out. It's not so much waste, it's conservation. There you go, okay, better word. And that's it, four reps. Okay, he's happy. I know that uh, three reps or more right now is gonna be, it's gonna put me in the points. So uh, I did the job, now I simply move on to the next event. So uh, quite happy with that performance. And let's check out Mr. Poundstone. Now Poundstone wants to do well here. He is the defending Fortissimus champion, the defending strongest man on earth. He is currently lagging in second place behind Big Z. Now he's certainly gotta make a push here. He wants to try to beat the Big Z in this event. Now you notice not wearing shoes, why Steve? Well, because uh, he's more comfortable in his socks. It gets now. them closer to the ground, they don't have to pull the bar as far. Exactly. There you go. I see you've been working on your ab. <laughs> yeah, no, I got it. You notice how the socks are very even on his legs as well. Yeah, so, yes, uh, fashion a, statement there. Basley Alexia Ab going there, Steve. Anyway, you can see his technique is very methodical. He's good combination of leg extension and back extension. He's staying very tight, back is tight. He's pausing. Now they have to dead stop between reps. They can't do continuous tension reps, which is much easier. Now look at those legs, Sam. He's, he's got such strong legs, and he's obviously using it to his advantage in this event. Now he wants to get as many reps as possible, preferably at least 10, and that way it'll put him at the front of the field. Mark Felix will be very hard to beat. Well, he's certainly off to a good start, and he, he should come close to that number, trying to get to double digits. Big Z is coming up after, and he wants to give him a... And there it is. And Big Ten Z's reps is what he does. Known for his powerlifting ability, including the deadlift. Uh, he's certainly given Big Z a target. Uh, ten reps is so-so. Uh, I don't think that's uh, a very good number for me, you know? It's, it's all right, but the breathing became an issue. I was hoping to get one more, but I just pulled on. There's nothing there, you know? And here is the man, Big Z Savickas. The most decorated strength athlete of the modern age. This guy's been competing as a professional strongman for 17 years. That's saying a lot, and that's obviously impressive, and he's also in the socks. And he keeps getting better. So here's the question. Does he have to beat Poundstone, or does he need to go for 13 reps? Well, he, he doesn't necessarily need to get to 13. Mark Felix's 13 is, is going to take a lot out of him to get there. Um, I, I think he can do it, but he wants to stay ahead of Poundstone. His strategy will be to do better than Poundstone on pretty much well, every event to maintain his lead. Poundstone, meanwhile, is trying to play catch-up. Wow, so it's quite a battle looming between these two guys. Let's Absolutely. See if he can do it. And the scuttlebutt before the contest was these were the two guys to beat. Um, it was going to go head to head. Last year, as I mentioned, it came to a Rocky Balboa final. Poundstone won by one point, doing the impossible. He did what he definitely needed to do to win, and that was to lift the unliftable Louis Sear 530 pound uh, stone. Uh, so he came up big. He didn't back into that win, that's for sure. No, he didn't. He really earned that. Even Big C said. Derek deserves that win. He's at a look at that, 11 reps. He does beat him by one. Wow. So Mark Felix wins the event with 13 reps. He gets the precious 14 points. He's followed by Zavikas, Poundstone, Marco, Ortmoyer, Shaw, Hollins, and Kokliev. This is Travis Ortmeyer, and you're watching Fortissimus 2009. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. And you'd better listen to him, because you don't want to miss event number four after this.
to be strong, you must to train and always uh, not uh, strong in in the in the gym, just only st strong also in your mind. Maybe some days in mind is uh, most important than the strength, but uh, don't smoke and don't drink. Do <laughs> train very hard, and you will be strong and and uh, good person. So. And let's go to event number four, the Iron Mind Overhead World Challenge. Wow, this is a two-handed overhead medley. They have 90 seconds to lift five different implements overhead, getting increasingly heavy. We start here with the 1980 log. This is a 346 and a half pound log, a replica of the log that Bill Kazmaier lifted overhead to set the world record in 1980. One of the earliest World Strongest Man contests. Uh, that dates back a little bit. We've got Meriumets up first. And he gets the log easily. Now, you see the technique here. This is the axle, the Apollon axle, 1892 Apollon axle replica named after the French strongman Louis Apollon. And it's 366 pounds. Uh, don't try this at home, folks. Then we've got the 1988 Kazmaier True Log, when Kazmaier reset the world record in 1988 with a 375-pound overhead log lift. Watch the technique here. Wow, quite a log to lift. Look at that. Oh, well, Murubet's so a beautiful close. Beautiful technique here. He's just having a little trouble with the lockout. Drive with the legs, thrust with the hips, and press out. Uh, he's got it up, but that, he just does two logs in 21.8 seconds. Here's Brian Shaw attempting that 375 pound true log. Wow, he gets it up there with those long arms. That's incredible. Can't quite press it out. Wow, he finishes two logs, 21.96. See how the log pulls away from your center of gravity? Now that's called a continental, where the bar touches you on the way out. This is a continental clean by Louis Philippe Jean. That's 366 pounds he manhandles. Look at that. Look at that. He's got it up there. Two locks, 32.77 seconds. And now we've got Kozlovics, and he's going to give it a shot. This is the first one, and he does one in 5.81 seconds. And that but only one rising. log. Kozlovics is a good log lifter. I don't know what happened there. Uh, Kokolyev up next. There's another Continental over under grip. Surprising, the Olympic lifter that he is. He does two in 27.62. Nice jerk there, but he didn't get the third. Uh, these guys are having trouble getting the third one. Here's Phil Fister. And Fister, let's see what he can do. Easy continental clean. Fister does two in 36.94. Oh, very cool contest. You know, the first event was especially brutal. But, you know, these fans are what make it fun for the guys. So, big hats off to all the fans. And what an amazing crowd and an amazing organization here in Montmagny. Oh, yeah, the Fortissimus uh, promotion is fantastic here. So well organized. Everyone treated so well. It's truly impressive. Speaking of impressive, here's Ortmeier. I love watching Travis lift because he's very quick. He's very dynamic. He clearly has done some Olympic lifting. You watch how quick he is for a man of his size. Uh, he's certainly coming with a purpose, and he seems to have a plan. Nice jerk there with the Apollon axle. Got those first two up in a good time. And that's two inch thick. The bar is two inches thick and very hard to hold on to. And nobody has left of the third one yet. Let's see if Ortmeier can manage it. Ortmeier might be able to do it here. Remember, this is the fourth event. These guys are really tired. Uh, he's using everything he has. You can see the effort there. Now the log pulls away from your center of gravity, so it's very hard. It's oh, not a, so close. It's not a normal jerk. That's the problem here. And he does a good time for two, though. 20.92. That was a good attempt as any. Ah! Well, let's see how Derek Poundstone can do. He's getting ready. Poundstone is just brutally strong, and dynamic, and very technical, too. Look at how easily he pulls that to his shoulders. Nice push, a little bit of a push jerk there, very nicely done. I've got the first one up in good time, Sam. Efficient technique. Continental onto the sternum there, up to the shoulders, 366 pounds. He's gonna go for three, but it's important he gets the second one up in a good time, oh, so. Trouble there with the lockout. It is extremely hot in here too, and that just saps the energy from it. The humidity in here must be close to 100%. It's wow. going to start raining soon, Steve. Unbelievable. Wet. And these guys, wow. They're, they're, you can see Poundstone is concerned. 
Now, he has the most extensive private collection of strongman implements ever. I'm, I'm sure of it. This guy's got, you know, three of pretty much everything. He trains like a madman. He builds these implements for himself to train with. All right, let's see. He's got to lift this one. He's got to get three. That'll really put him in great position, Sam. Got it up there. There's the pressure's on him. Oh, oh. doesn't happen. Nothing left in the tank there. He did the two, and let's check his time. Well, Hounsell looks as perplexed as you're going to see him. Looks like he's trying it again. He's not quitting. This is not a quitter, Sam. Good technique here. Watch his technique, how he, how he thumps that up there. Of course, time not a factor. If you can get three up there, but not to be. 26.41 seconds for two. Yeah, that's a real disappointment for him. I know he, he was training very hard on this. Well, he would have loved to get the three, but uh, we're going to see how the Big Z does next. Well, Big Z held the world record in the log lift, still holds the world record in the log lift, over 450 pounds. So uh, we're going to see some good lifting here. Well, he's certainly going to go for three. But let's see him do the first one first. Got to start somewhere. Well, watch this. That is a strict press. That is unreal wow. strength. Wow. He three, threw it up there. About sir. 350. He, he, he didn't even use his legs. Unbelievable. Watch the axle. Three, look at that. He didn't even look finish that. cleaning it and he started pressing it out. That's like Bill Kazmaier used to do. That's crazy. If anybody can do three, it's this guy. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're going to see this go up. 375 pound Kazmaier True Log. There it is. Look and at that. There it is. Easy lockout. Unbelievable effort there. He's pleased. The fans are standing. So he's won the event. Anything else now is gravy. And he does all three. Not that the time matters, but he did it pretty quickly. Sam. He's got the 14 points. Let's see if he's going to go for the next one. This is the Iron Mind Axle, 390 pounds. The fourth implement. Oh, crazy stuff. Not to be, but he lifts three at a great time also, 29.36 seconds. You know what the fifth implement was? It was the Big Z log, which is named after him, the 2004 Big Z. Watch the technique here on the 375er. Easy clean, very little knee drive, presses it overhead easily. I feel bad because in training I lift all and, you know, and want to lift all, but it's competition for the event and tired. So not not very good result, but uh, it's okay because I won this event. And the big Z, too strong for the field in this event. He takes first place in 14 points. He's followed by Ortmeier, Murdiumet, Shaw, Poundstone, Kogliev, Jean, and Pfister. I'm Terry Hollands, England's strongest man, and you're watching Fortissimus 2009. And don't touch that remote. We'll be back after this on TSN. I got the nickname Texas Stone Man, uh, basically because the Atlas Stones kind of came naturally for me, and I've always done very well at them. I took the title from Magnus Samuelson in 19, or 2005, uh, the World Championships. He got to go right after me, and he couldn't beat my time, so ever since then, I've always been either first, 90% first, every now and then I'm second, except for last year for Tissimus where I, I kind of had a mishap. I threw the second stone over the platform and had to go through the dirt and put it back up. But other than that, always at the top. And that sets us up for event number five, the Atlas Stone. This is the Slater King of Stones World Challenge, part one. So basically, we've got six Atlas Stones weighing between 300 and 425 pounds in 25 pound increments that have to be lifted onto the platforms. The first platform is 68 inches high. And we'll start with Travis Ortmeier, the King of Stones. He's known as the Texas Stone Man. He is one of, if not the best stone lifter on the planet right now. Off to a great start. 
This is stone number three, and he's got it up 350 there. 350 pounds. Here's the 375, Steve. He's got a great time going, and he's got four stones. Beautiful technique, extremely powerful. Very, very explosive extension here on these stones. Look at that. He's oh, going having for five. He's having difficulty grabbing that four stone. Uh, grip is all important, Sammy. They're using tacky, which is a combination of a rosin and turpentine, which is uh, forms a honey-like mixture that makes it uh, so that your skin sticks well to the stone. And I guess after a few stones, it wears off a little bit. You it gotta does. Recondition it. He's there got five go. up there. He lost some valuable time, though. Here comes the 400-pound stone. This platform is 54 inches. Well, if he could do this stone, the time won't make as much of a difference. Because, wow. Oh, that's frustrating for him. The stone man is having a bad event here. He's being advised of how much time he's got left. There is a maximum. Oh, it's 90 seconds, and he was so looking forward to this event. I spoke to him earlier, and... Uh... <laughs> well, let's see what he can do. He's got to get this one up. He's giving it his best That's shot. The, this is the sixth stone, I believe, isn't it? Yes, this is the it big is. one. Okay. That's the My big mistake. one. He does five, and he does 46.66 seconds. Oh, he is so frustrated. He only got five of the six. He really wanted to finish this event and be the first man to do it. Well, that's an angry man, that Ormeyer. And let's see how Fister can do. Phil Fister, the veteran strongman. He's got the first one up there. And he's got two. He's got a good time going. 325. Here comes the 350. All right. He's on number four now. Not having too much trouble yet, Sam. 375. Here comes the 400-pound stone. Now they have to really squeeze that stone into their, their torsos and extend up simultaneously. There it oh, is. There he goes. He's got five. One left. Now, stature does help here. The taller you are, the shorter, relatively speaking, those platforms are. Right. This is the sixth stone, 425 pounds. Uh, this is the one they're shooting for. He's staring it down. He's got a good time for five, so he's just giving it his best effort to get that sixth one up. Cracked it off the ground. That's it. Well, oh, he's giving it another shot. Gave a little salute, but he's... 90 seconds to complete all six stones. Yeah, he's got the time. Might as well use it. The difficulty here is there's nothing to hang on to. They're perfectly round. You have to squeeze the stones, pull them really tight in close to the body, basically hoist them up. And that's why the tack Look is so that. important. Nice technique here. Uh, he got it up off the ground, but that's it. A great time. 29.59 for five stones. You know, this is the fifth event out of ten. We got a long way to go, so I think some of them are saving some of them for the next five events. Phil Fister, ladies and gentlemen. And a very appreciative Krokliev. And we have Derek Poundstone up now. Let's see if he can live up to his namesake here, Steve. Watch how fast he is. Look at that. He practically he shoulders that stone. Now, why? Because he's only 6'1". There you go, so height plays a factor in this event. A big factor here, that first podium is almost six feet tall, well, and he, he's just over six feet tall. The first couple were ping pong balls to him, but let's see how tough it gets now as he hits the fourth stone. He's in second place right now in the competition. That's right, he is the defending strongest man on earth, the defending Fortissimus 2008 champion. Right now he is chasing Big Z's Adrunas Savikas. It's a cat and mouse game right now. Uh, He's got five stones in great time, but he's got to get this one, Sam. Absolutely. Anything he can do to beat Big Z in an event will put him in the running, will give him additional points and bring him closer to that victory that he so desires. Oh, look at that. Also on the rim. So close again, Sam. Oh, you can see he just lacked a little bit on the extension there, but he is shorter than Mikhail Kloklev. We saw him hit the rim as well. Look oh, at the tacky. He is going to give it another shot. It's just amazing, Steve, that everyone's done the five stones so far. That, that's an unprecedented performance in the Atlas Stone event. Just goes to show you how good these guys are. Now watch the extension here. You think he's taking his time, but he's not. He's, 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 it's... Concentration. Well, look, look at... Again, he gets it up and on the rim. Five stones in a great time, 32.5 seconds. 
He saved it all up for that last extension. Derek, that performance was amazing. Again, you came close to getting that last stone. You're now in second position in this event. What's going through your mind right now? I can't believe I didn't get that last stone. It didn't feel too bad. It slipped a little bit, you know, we make little mistakes, but that's the story today. It seems like I make stupid little mistakes here and there, and I'm trying to make up for it, and then I make more mistakes. <laughs> but it didn't feel too bad. Well, the story here then is that you're trailing the big Z somewhat. So do you have a strategy to compensate? Absolutely. I just got to stop making mistakes and go out there and give it my all. The crowd's great. Thank you guys for getting behind me. I appreciate it. We love it. Thank you guys. Here comes the big man, Brian Shaw. Yeah, let's see if Brian Shaw can do it. Now, he's got an advantage here in that his, his height makes it easier to put the stones on the podium, but don't forget, he still has to bend down to pick up those stones. So that, that exactly. advantage is... So you lose a little bit there, but yeah. you gain on the end. Exactly. That first two, easy. Look at this. I mean, this guy's treating them like basketballs. Watch this. Look how much extension he gets, how much power. He just tosses them the at the end. Tosses them. Let's hope it doesn't go through the barrel. Four there stone, go. very Four. easy. I uh, like ping pong balls, Sam. Mm, more like basketball, Steve. Okay. Here comes 400. Here we go. And he, wow, are we going to see two this? points with that one. Will we see the sixth stone go up? Let's see. He's got plenty of time to give it a shot. If anyone can do it, it's Shaw from Colorado. He's going right after it, Sam. This guy's a promising young strongman. He's one of three men in the contest that weigh near 400 pounds. He's on a roll. It's off the ground. He's in good position here, good extension. Oh, he's got it up, he did it! Beautifully done. Unbelievable First man to do six stones. 54.78 seconds, six stones! Now that's what I'm talking about. This kid has potential, real potential. Uh, let's take a look at the replay, Steve. See how he did it. Oh yeah, he's happy. Watch the extension, squats back, stones right over his knees, taking the pressure off the back. Big extension, uses long arms, squeezes tight, and there you go onto the 50-inch platform, all six. Brian, that was amazing. You did all six Slater World Challenge Atlas Stones in just over 54 seconds. The first man to do so. That feels good. Feels good. What else can you say? So, is this the real Brian Shaw? Hey, this is a little bit better. We'll end the first day on a strong note, you know. You know, I think you kind of get in a groove with this contest. It's so long, but, you know, tomorrow's a great day for me and I'm gonna be coming, so these other guys better watch out. Looks like you got the boost you wanted there, Brian. Yeah, definitely, definitely, we're ready. Congratulations, fantastic performance. Thank you, thank you, merci. So Brian Shaw lifts all six stones and takes 14 points for first place. He's followed by Fister, Poundstone, Miriamitz, Kokliev, Zavikas, Ortmeier, and Hollins. And what a great crowd we have here in Montmagny, Quebec. Yeah, man, I, I want to know where I can get some of those stick things, those wavy things. And the standings. After five events, we have Zavikas in first place. He's followed by Poundstone, Shaw, Ortmeier, Cochlea, Buryamets, Fister, and Hollins. And rounding out the 14, we finish with Jean Kazelnik, Felix Marku, Boyer, and Savoie from all corners of planet Earth. My name is Derek Poundstone, Connecticut, USA, and reigning Fortissimus champion. For more Fortissimus 2009, we'll see you next time. Fortissimus. What a great show. We look forward to next time. Five events done, five to go, only halfway done, Steve, at the best strongman contest on planet Earth, Fortissimus 2009. For Super Sam Dubé, I'm Steve Besner. We'll see you next time on Fortissimus 2009.